What's up guys, on today's episode, we're testing torque wrenches. Specifically, who makes the best budget-minded electronic torque wrench? All right guys, so for this test, what I wanted to do is I wanted to find the best full-feature electronic torque wrench. I'm testing all half-inch drive units here. They all have the angle function, they all go to 250 foot-pounds. So they're all very similar. And with all that in mind, the uh, four that I ended up with was the Harbor Freight Quinn, the Cobalt Electronic Torque Wrench from Lowe's, the AC Delco Half-Inch Drive Electronic Torque Wrench, and the Gear Wrench Half-Inch Drive Electronic Torque Wrench with angle because you can get it with and without angle. So I'm gonna bring you over to the bench. I'm gonna show you guys the features on each one of them. I'm gonna do a little bit of torque testing and then I'm gonna give you my thoughts finally at the end. So the first one I'm gonna start with here is the Harbor Freight Quinn Torque Wrench. Uh, this one will set you back $169.99. You can get it on a coupon for about $150. With or without the coupon, it is the cheapest one in the test. Um, the specs on it, it'll go from 12 and a half to 250 foot-pounds. The accuracy is plus or minus 3% clockwise and plus or minus 4% counterclockwise. Uh, it has a 72 tooth ratchet. It'll store up to nine torque values for you. So if you have nine common torque values, it, you can automatically store those and automatically revert back to those when you need them. Um, has a 90 day warranty, which is tied for the lowest in the test and also comes with a calibration sheet. Uh, the calibration sheet really doesn't say a whole lot. It simply lists the serial number of the unit, the time and date when it was tested, and the temperature and says, yep, it's good to go. Doesn't really list any of the specifics as far as what the testing consisted of, what any of the uh, torque values tested were, any of that stuff. It just says, yep, it's fine. Uh, the batteries are included as well. and. The other nice feature about this is gonna be the case. Uh, the case actually is it very well made. It actually has hinges as opposed to just the, uh, you know, real thin piece of plastic that you essentially bend back and forth. Um, with that said, the case is a little bulky, but it is a very nice unit. All right, so the next one I have is gonna be the Cobalt. Cobalt is 200 bucks, but it does have a one year warranty right off the bat. The only major difference between the two is going to be the ratchet. This one has the uh, push button release for the socket, and this only has a 36 tooth ratchet in it. Not sure why, this is what my local Lowe's had in stock, but if you actually go look at some of the specs on these, they're supposed to be 72, just like the Harbor Freight unit. So why this one is a 36, not really sure. Comes with a shockingly identical calibration sheet to the Harbor Freight. And a uh, sweet cobalt sticker, if that's your thing. Um, the case isn't quite as good as the Harbor Freight. Just has the traditional, uh, however you wanna call it, basically thin piece of plastic that they're using it as a hinge that you bend back and forth, although it is much smaller. All right, so the next one I have here is the AC Delco. The AC Delco is gonna set you back about $210. It goes from 12 and a half to 250 foot pounds. Um, the accuracy on this one is much better specification wise than the other three in the test. It goes from plus or minus one and a half percent counterclockwise to plus or minus two and a half percent counterclockwise. Uh, has a 72 tooth ratchet. It also has the button release for the socket. It has 30 preset torque values, has a one year warranty, and this one out of probably all three has the most legitimate calibration sheet. Um, there's actual torques on it. It's not just a sheet of paper that says, yep, it's good. So I'm gonna have to test whether or not this is accurate as what it says it is, but as far as looking at the specifications, it's very impressive. Um, one of the other things I really like about this tool is the case that comes with it. 
I was kind of blown away when I got this thing and it showed up with a metal case. It has a metal case with a foam insert. Um, the hinges on either side are just rivets, so the, probably the first thing to break on these is going to be the rivets on either side of the case. But you could always take the foam insert out of the case and just set that in your toolbox and leave the full foam insert in your toolbox. That's totally up to you. Um, the case is kind of bulky because it has a foam insert in it, but it's very, very nice. All right, so the last one I have here is the gear wrench. The gear wrench will set you back between 230 and 250 bucks. Um, it's good from 25 to 250 foot pounds. The accuracy on it is plus or minus 2% clockwise, plus or minus 3% counterclockwise. It has a 72 tooth ratchet, but this is the only one in the test that actually has a flex head. So that's kind of a big deal. That really helps out, especially when you're using something this long in an engine compartment. That flex head is definitely a huge benefit. Um, has 10 preset torque values. Um, it also has a backlit screen and vibration. Uh, this is kind of what's unique though. So there's a one year warranty on the tool and that's what they claim on the box. But when you start reading the fine print in the owner's manual, the calibration is only warranted for 90 days. So in my opinion, what good is a torque wrench that doesn't have a good calibration? So as far as I can see, this thing has a 90 day warranty because I might as well use a breaker bar if it doesn't have a calibration to it. All right, so torque testing. I'm gonna show you guys real quick how I perform my torque testing because I don't own any fancy like torque testing equipment. So I wanted repeatable results obviously and I wanted an apples to apples comparison on every wrench in the test. So the first thing I did was I took each one of the wrenches, chucked it up in the vise on the anvil and made the, um, the wrench itself parallel with the floor as close as I could get it to level. Then what I did was I measured 22 inches from the center of the anvil out to the end of the handle on every wrench. So that gets you right about in the middle of the handle on every one of these wrenches because they're about the same length. You take that 22 inches and you divide it by 12 to try and convert it to foot pounds. So that would give you 1.833 repeating for the number of feet from the anvil to where you're gonna attach your weight. For weight, what I'm using is I'm using a 40.09 pound suitcase weight off of my garden tractor. I also took into account the weight of the string, which was basically nothing, and the weight of the rag that I used to protect the handle from the string. So with that number, with that number in mind, you take 40.09 pounds, which is the weight of the weight, times it by 1.833 repeating, and that gives you a foot pound rating of 75 foot pounds at, at the wrench. That's with one weight. So I wanted to test it with some additional weight to see if the calibration was accurate the higher you went up the scale. So I simply added a second weight and I used 150 foot pounds as my uh, test standard. So I tested it at 75 pounds and 150 pounds. Uh, the other thing that I did was I also did torque angle testing because every one of these will do torque angle for torque to yield bolts. Now obviously I didn't tear a car apart and tear into a cylinder head and buy a new set of cylinder head bolts to verify the accuracy of these wrenches. What I did was I loosened a lug nut on my truck completely, tightened it down to 30 foot pounds and then added an, an additional 30 degrees. That get me in the neighborhood of about 170 foot pounds with each wrench. Now how I verified the angle is I have one of the old school torque angle gauges that simply attaches to a breaker bar and a socket. And I verified that the reading on the gauge matched the readout on the screen. So what I did was I just cranked this until I saw 30 pounds or 30 degrees, I should say, on the gauge, and then recorded what I saw on the wrench. So with that, let me get you some of the results. So as far as accuracy, coming in last place is going to be the cobalt wrench. 
So at 75 foot pounds, the cobalt had a reading of 72.52 foot pounds. And at 150 foot pounds, it had an actual reading of 146.52. Those are the averages over five different torque applications on both settings, off the 75 and 150. The strange part about the cobalt was this was the most off as far as the torque rating in foot pounds, but it was the most accurate when it came to the torque to yield degree setting. So 30 degrees in reality netted me 30.8 degrees on the wrench. And that's the same way. It's over five, five different torques. And I took the average of all five and that's what I got. All right, so in third place for accuracy is gonna be the gear wrench. Uh, the gear wrench, I got an average reading at 75 foot-pounds of 77.04 foot-pounds. Um, at 150 foot-pounds, I got an average reading of 151.84 foot-pounds. Once again, that's an average over five different torque applications. Uh, as far as the accuracy of the angles, I torqued it to 30 degrees in reality and then recorded what was on the wrench and the average that I got over five torque applications was 34.8 degrees. Um, this was the least accurate as far as angles in this test, but there is one caveat with doing angles on one of these wrenches. It doesn't matter who makes it, whether it's Snap-on, gear wrench, Quinn, Cobalt, doesn't matter. They specify a certain speed that you need to apply torque to the fastener. If you apply it too fast, it will not read correctly. If you apply it too slow, it will not read correctly. So you have to pay attention how you're actually torquing the fastener when you're doing a degree torque specification with one of these wrenches. Um, that's why when all possible, I still kind of like these because it's literally impossible for one of these to lie to you unless it slips on you, but you'll be able to see it. All right, so in second place, as far as the accuracy is gonna be the AC Delco. The AC Delco, I got an average reading at 75 foot-pounds of 76.07 foot-pounds. At 150 foot-pounds, I got an average reading of 151.94 foot-pounds. So as far as the torque angle testing, I got an average reading of 31.62 degrees on the AC Delco wrench. Um, much more accurate as far as degrees than what the uh, gear wrench was. I applied torque the same way, but the results on foot pounds were very, very similar between this one and the gear wrench. I put this one in second place because I got a much better reading on the degree setting than what I did on the gear wrench. So in first place for accuracy, believe it or not, was the Harbor Freight Quinn Torque Wrench. Um, unbelievably, at 75 foot-pounds, I got an average reading over five different torques of 75.64 foot-pounds, and at 150 foot-pounds, I got an average reading at five different torques of 150 foot-pounds. This thing was dead nuts. As far as the torque angle testing, I got an average reading of 31.6 on the LCD screen when it was 30 degrees in reality. All right, so I wanted to say something here real quick regarding the Harbor Freight and the Cobalt. As you guys can see, these two are actually clones of one another. They are the identical torque wrench. One costs, like I said earlier in the video, 200 bucks. The other one's 170. This one, as you guys heard, was the most accurate of the test. Now, the difference between these two as far as accuracy, I think strictly comes down to the calibration. So what I'm trying to say here is your results may vary from mine because obviously these are the same wrench. There's the same tooling marks down here on the head. The LCD screens are the same. The button layout's the same the way the buttons function is exactly the same and the the way you progress through the screens and the way you um, bring up certain functions is exactly the same they're the same tool heck they even shipped with the same toshiba batteries in both tools 
So, like I said, your results may vary with this, but it's obvious that the difference in calibration in between these two is what's different and not necessarily one tool being more accurate than the other. All right, so as far as the results, coming in fourth place is gonna be the Cobalt. Uh, as I to just told you guys, the Cobalt is a clone of the Harbor Freight. It costs more money, has a slightly better warranty without adding on additional coverage to the Harbor Freight. Um, it only has a 36 tooth ratchet, at least for the one that I have here. Um, it does have a push button release for the socket, but that is really the only difference between the two tools is going to be the ratchet head and the push button. All right, so in third place, I'm going to have to give it to the gear wrench. Um, I think the biggest upside to the gear wrench as far as the tool itself is probably the flex head. This is the only one in the test with a flex head. The other thing I really like about it is it has vibration. Um, I'm used to using a snap-on tech wrench and that has vibration as well, just like this one does. But with that said, it is the most expensive one in the test. The, um, the interface on it is kind of clunky as far as navigating it. Um, the other thing that's kind of weird is they warranty the tool for one year, but they only warranty the calibration for 90 days. So getting back to what I was talking about with the interface, most tools you simply push up and down to set your torque. With the gear wrench, you have to push set, input your new torque value, let's call it 28 and a half, push set again, then it's saved, then you can torque your fastener. So it's kind of the same thing with angle, but if you want to put it into angle mode, you hit this M, for, and then until it goes to the A for angle, you push set, it calibrates, you then push set again to change the angle, push set again to save it, and now you're actually ready to torque something. So it's kind of, a clunk, it's kind of clunky because you're pushing set all the time. Every other wrench in this uh, comparison, you just push up or down and it goes. You push one button, it changes functions. You push up or down and it changes you know, the, the specification you're torquing it to. Um, but like I said, it's a nice tool, kind of expensive, kind of clunky on the interface. The accuracy is good as you guys saw, um, but it would not be my first choice at all. All right, so in second place, I'm gonna have to give it to the AC Delco. Now the AC Delco, has a backlit screen, vibration, just like the, uh, the gear wrench, but the user interface is much better. It was slightly more accurate. Um, the warranty is much better at one year, but it is a little expensive in, for the ones in this test at $210. Um, the other thing I really like about it is it has a metal case. I can't remember the last time I bought a tool especially for $210 that had a metal case and a foam insert. Um, that was pretty cool, but a couple of the things I don't like about this tool is the screen. The screen is kind of small and the field of view on it really isn't very good. So like if you look at the screen straight on, you can see what the numbers are, but if you're on an angle and you're not looking directly at the screen, it's very hard to see what the numbers actually read. Um, there are some small icons over here in the corner as well that are kind of hard to see. My vision is excellent. It's not a huge deal, but I could totally see like my dad who is 60 would have a very hard time seeing the indicators over in this corner of the screen. All right, so in first place, I'm gonna have to give it to the Harbor Freight Quinn. Um, I had my doubts until I started torque testing this thing. I was thoroughly impressed. Now, like I told you, it may just be the calibration difference between this and the Cobalt, but the price point of this one is much better than the Cobalt. Even if you factor in buying an additional warranty for, for this tool through Harbor Freight to extend it out to one year, it's still well cheaper than $200, especially if you use a coupon. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Uh, go down to the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. You know, is this a fair test? Did I do it the right way? Or do you guys have other options out there that may be a better option than what I showed here? 
I've got a pretty decent amount of money invested in this video, so I'd appreciate it if you'd like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys.